rotate uh, across all the positions, whether it be working on the floor, serving tables, working behind the bar, bar backing, or even in the kitchen. And we don't have chefs, bartenders, and waiters. We've got one team. One team, one dream, if you will. It's, uh, but the whole idea with this is that everyone's cross-trained across all the sort of various aspects of the business. And the benefit of that is you end up with team members that are across everything that we do. So we never have to, you know, say to the guests, oh, let me ask, let me go and ask the chef about that. You know, the chef is basically the bartender that you're talking to. Birdie as a bar doesn't operate uh, as a traditional cocktail bar, I guess, from a lot of different aspects. The first obvious one is the drinks that we're doing, doing a lot of our own fermenting and distilling in-house and that sort of thing is the obvious one, having a very seasonal approach. But it actually operates a little bit more like a kitchen uh, in more ways than one, not just from the food and drinks perspective, but even in terms of the, the actual design and the layout. So I guess it really begins with this station here. So this station kind of operates a little bit more like a chef's pass, if you will. So every drink that's made at some point gets uh, put on top here. And it serves a number of purposes. So the first purpose that it serves is basically to free up the bartenders here. So on a busy night, we have two bartenders making drinks here that are serving the guests at the bar. The advantage of this station here and the advantage of the way we structure the staff, not having bar staff, wait staff, kitchen staff, is that the guys here can be serving drinks here, but obviously when a docket comes through here for one of the tables, they're still being made here, but what they've actually uh, done is they're started here and they're only like half prepared, and then the bartender will put it here, and you've got this garnish station here that the person on the floor actually finishes the drink and takes it. So the advantage of that is this person can go back to serving the people at the bar much quicker. So for example, we've got this is our freezer here with um, all of our pre-iced glassware. So anything for like for all the highballs, you've got pre-cut glass here. Anything rocks here. Um, chilled, you can know is here. Um, but then anything like this is the garnish for the Wee Bar that's pre-prepared. So it's grated white chocolate on there. The bartender will get an order. He'll take the docket. He'll stir down the drink on ice, come here, pre prepare it here, and put it here. And then the person on the floor will add the finishing touch and take from, from here. Also, any uh, wines, beers, ferments are all poured from these fridges here. So it also allows the floor, supporting f bartenders that are on the floor to be making drinks as well. So really the, the bartender on the station, all they're doing is anything that requires stirring over ice. And that's the, the only drinks that the bar bartenders are actually required to do. Like I said, it frees up their time to do more things, whether it's just focus on taking more orders on serving people at the bar or even running food out and that sort of thing. They're not stagnant and stuck to the bar. things that we uh, check off. You can see that's a long list of uh, checklists. The reason why we have this is I can't even myself begin to remember every single prep task, so I don't expect the guys to as well. So that's why we have these task sheets. So everything's listed here. Um, like I said earlier, some drinks might have four or five smaller prep line items for the one drink. And some of them might have to be fermented seven days in advance, that sort of thing. 
So we have to be quite organized with these lists to be able to ensure that we've always got those uh, prep line items. Like I said before, because of the seasonal nature of the menu, there might be some things that we do run out of. Uh, so we have to be careful that whatever we do put on the menu and we've committed to, um, in terms of like our ferments and that sort of thing, we can't be running out of that all the time, otherwise we're literally running out of everything all the time. So it's a fine line of, you know, being okay with a couple of things running out when it's coming out of season or whatnot, but um, things running out because we haven't done the prep in advance, that's not something that we, we want to do. So there's, there's constantly things fermenting on the go. Um, there's a constant checking um, of, of our ferments to see what stage they're at. Even once we put them in the bottle, so once we put them in the bottle, we can do it in a second actually. Um, daily we taste the ferments because they're changing constantly. So it's sort of what we want to do is embrace that change and not to say that we've put this ferment in the bottle on Tuesday and then on Friday it tastes different and so therefore we don't want to serve it to, to a guest. We're not saying that it tastes bad, it's just evolving. So we want to understand how it's evolved in terms of flavor so we can communicate that to the guest. So it might be, for example, uh, this one here, which is um, our ferment that we've just put on the menu a couple of weeks ago called Fistful of Peppers. And so this is actually, uh, the base of it is uh, peaches from the Yarra Valley, uh, Padron peppers from Romaro Farm uh, here in Victoria and uh, mountain marigolds from the uh, valley. We ferment that for about 10 days. When we first ferment it and we bottle it, it still has that sweetness from the peach, but after bottling it, it still continues to ferment and it dries out slightly. Also, you get a little bit of spice variation from the Padron peppers. The first batch we did wasn't spicy at all. Second batch we did, I don't know what happened, it was like super spicy. Um, not in a bad way, it was just, it had just changed. So just like a, a winemaker talks about, okay, this vintage is different from my last vintage, it's the same for us with our ferments, but just on a smaller scale. So we, we taste all the ferments before service that are bottled, so we understand where they're at, and that's communicated in the handover uh, for the crossover of shift. Um, and then we also f taste all the ferments that we've got going that haven't been bottled yet, to establish, okay, are they ready to be bottled? We actually run the menu very tight. So on any given night, uh, especially towards the end of a, a season, we may run out of something on the menu. Once we run out of something um, that's out of season, that's it, it's gone. So sometimes we, we, we time it perfectly and it's like out, out at the end of the night and then the next day we change the menu, but obviously it's not gonna happen like that all the time. So we might get to a, you know, a Friday night and we might run out of something in the middle of service, but that's okay and that's what I wanna sort of teach my guys to sort of talk to the guests, to educate them on you know, what the concept of a seasonal menu really is. So it's, it's actually quite a weird shaped building, so that was the challenge with the designers, to so come up with something that was inviting, but worked and had like a flow. So we really talked about the, the flow of movement through here. So then another element or another station uh, for service is this waiter station here that also operates as our retail section. So anything from like our bottled cocktails, uh, coffee we sell retail, uh, to any collabs that we're doing. So this is a, a pet nap, it's a three-way collab between ourselves a uh, wine producer called Kind Folk and uh, a wine bar called Bar Liberty. So we sell that here as well. And also during the day, this is where we brew all the coffee. And then it comes through to uh, the Avery as well, but there's always something going on in there. different ferments like uh, this one here this is an oat lychee and honey ferment uh, to make like a natural carbonated soda this is some uh, lacto fermented strawberries 
uh, that we've got going on for uh, another little bit of a soda collab with the guys at Strange Love. Um, this is some banana skin sherry. Uh, there's always something going on. Mm -hmm. 